Hello friends. In this video, we will be discussing laws, regulations and compliance. I have made one video some months back on the history of cyber laws which were developed in United States over the time. I will be giving a link for that so that you can refer it and uh, we will not uh, waste our time in repeating the same thing again. So I will be giving the link, you can refer it and you can see the whole history of laws uh, which were started in 1984 and how it ended up till date, you know, right now what is the current situation. Now when it comes to laws, um, it's, um, it's a very dry subject for people who are in IT because we generally are not involved in memorizing dates and you know looking into the sequence of political and you know uh, judicial events which happened in time you know in past so yeah like um, let's let's see if how interesting i can make it and how far i can go to explain this um let's come to the drawing board so when it comes to when we discuss uh, laws, basically before we discuss laws, we, we should know that there is something called compliance in a company and this, this, this compliance is basically driven by either legal requirements or regulatory requirement. So legal requirements are driven by the laws of the country and regulatory requirements are driven by some industry standards like PCI DSS for, for data, uh, you know, uh, credit card security, right? So those standards forces a company who is in the business of uh, processing digital payment, they should comply to that, uh, that standard and that's a regulatory requirement. So, so legal and regulatory are two, two different aspects. The third compliance uh, requirement could be driven by company's own internal you know, um, security risk assessment. Like they can do the risk assessment and business impact analysis and they can go for some compliance that's the, that's an internal uh, internal driver but when it comes to external drivers there are either legal requirements or regulatory requirements now when it comes to legal uh, we are basically dealing with either criminal laws civil laws and administrative laws right so in criminal laws um, what we have to remember is that the law enforcement agencies are a part of the criminal uh, investigation and or wherever there is a criminal in investigation the law enforcement agencies will be there they will be dealing mostly with the issues of public safety uh, social unrest and uh, things which actually harm someone right so things like murder assault robbery arson so these are the, the kind of these are the examples of some of the criminal activities where criminal laws will get applied now when it comes to civil laws civil laws are very um, uh, are very uh, i will say not sensitive to someone's life and uh, you know uh, uh, you know dignity or you know uh, the the way the people live actually so civil laws are basically uh, is the dispute settlement uh, kind of uh, kind of laws like the dispute between an employee and an employer so those kind of thing will come under civil laws and administrative laws are basically laws which are run by different departments of the organization and they form their own laws right they form their own processes on own procedures but the point is that administrative laws should not violate or should not contradict civil laws and criminal laws right so this, so this is the brief category of laws. I think um, um, when you when you refer my next video, which for which I'll be putting a link here, there I have defined uh, not defined sorry I have uh, completed the journey of the development of cyber laws, and you will see there what were the criminal laws and what were the. Uh, I think in that video there is only discussion of mostly criminal laws. Civil and administrative laws are not uh, a part of uh, uh, that discussion. One other thing is that CI, in CISSP we don't go in detail into civil and administrative um, laws basically. So yeah, how how the laws are getting um, are conceived basically or, or or take form. So so when we discuss laws, basically we discuss U.S. laws in CISSP what we should understand uh, in 
in the whole cycle of the of you know the law formation or the, or how a bill is trans is uh, um, accepted as a law, the cycle works like this. So we have a constitution of a country, right? Any country they have this constitution. Now that constitution is actually uh, made in action by different government uh, government uh, departments, different government agencies, and uh, one of the one of the one of the major and most prominent uh, body of the government government is the legislators, and they go to parliament and they actually uh, make laws for the country, and these laws are made uh, made basically some of the laws are. Uh, laws uh, which are constant, which are there, just there, uh, and and some laws go through the modification, and some new laws come in picture when there is a new requirement, right? So people who are uh, who are elected by different uh, constituents, they become legislators, uh, and they are basically either House of Representatives or Senate. They they go and sit in a parliament and they discuss uh, the issues and they discuss they present the bills and that bill is debated and if a, if a majority consensus is formed so those bills are made into laws now laws can be challenged uh, uh, by anyone it can be challenged in a in the in the court in the supreme court or the or any court um and the judges in a in a in a judiciary system if they see that these laws are contradicting with constitution right so they have this power to uh, make it null and void so they can actually nullify any law if it contradicts the constitution but if it do not contradict the constitution these these laws remain as laws as part of the constitutional amendment right so in constitution they make an amendment amendment and they introduce these laws now why why a legislative body make a law which will be unconstitutional so because uh, in 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 democracy uh, the parliament uh, or is most of the time it is a, it's a representation of majority right so the majoritarian um, uh, consensus or voice will always get accepted but there are chances that the decision made by majority may be wrong being in majority doesn't guarantee that you are right all the time so if they are wrong but and if they are in majority so where the where the balance of truth and falsehood or justice or injustice will be will be actually um will be practiced basically who will decide it so that's why the judiciary is there so the, so judiciary do not go with uh, who is in majority and who is not judiciary looks into constitution and see that the laws which are formulated are basically uh, reflecting the constitutional value or not there is a lot of subjective interpretation and you know uh, it's not very uh, black and white all the time there are many uh, shades of gray when it comes to deciding uh, these kind of thing fortunately in cissp these things are not there so we have to just know the the basic flow of how the laws are are actually um, uh, laws are created basically right so so that's uh, that's that's the background of uh, of different type of laws uh, the details are are very well presented in cybex 9th edition book uh, this uh, this uh, oh, this a small drawing will give you a very thousand very high level thousand feet idea of uh, of how it looks like now there is the history of the the cyber laws development which i have discussed uh, in my in my drawing um, so if i if i very quickly uh, do a sprint from 1984 to 2022 uh, let me see how fast i can go and i will put a link where i have done a half an hour detailed discussion on this topic as well so very beginning uh, if you go to 1984 so 1984 was a time when apple macintosh was introduced by steve jobs that was a historical moment in the timeline i have put the 
the development of Apple company as well, just to reflect how consumer market was also getting in shape when we were having different laws. So 1984, uh, Comprehensive Crime Control Act, which was basically the criminal uh, laws, they were applied to the computers uh, as well. And uh, that was not very much uh, efficient and effective. And there are some, some caveats that were addressed by CFA, which was uh, introduced in 1986. So CFA was uh, more specific to computers. Now, when, this, when CFA was introduced in 1986, um, you know, the judges in our court system, they wanted a new sentencing guideline so that they can uh, they can uh, sentence uh, you know judge someone like they can pass judgment so for this federal sentencing guideline was introduced in 1991 right uh, the details are discussed in the videos i'm not i will not uh, explain it here in in 1994 um, computer abuse amendment act was made this was very strict uh, it caused someone to do suicide basically uh, um, you know, the, the, the laws were not so strict, but you know, the lawyers are like, um, uh, I, 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 I have a, a, like a personal experience in, in one of the dispute, like, um, you know, and I saw that these lawyers actually, um, they have this objective of winning the case. Uh, they have two objectives, basically. I may be wrong, but this is my experience. The first objective they have is to win the case of course uh, to make their own reputation and second is they they want to suck suck their clients like they just they are just after money for small small things they will charge big amount so that's not the part of this ESSP discussion the why the, i i bring this uh, bring this up here that if you see the C, caa which was computer abuse and amendment act and cfa in 1986 these law there were these laws but uh, these lawyers, they are so shrewd, cunning and sharp. They can uh, fabricate anything and they can use any law to, to, make, to, to make you trapped. And uh, even a small thing, which is not a criminal act, but in the eyes of law, it will become a criminal act. So this kind of thing happened. And this guy, Aaron Schwartz, it's a famous, uh, famous story. You can Google it. He actually committed suicide and then then there were numerous revival to uh, to uh, to make it uh, more humane basically and uh, more uh, practical now in 1996 national information infrastructure protection act was passed basically this was a uh, this was just an a scope increment of cfa which was in 1986 only for computers but this this law extended that to the to the national infrastructure as well like um, roads gas pipeline electric power grids and all in 2002 george w bush and if you remember this famous uh, iraq invasion at that time he um, he introduced fisma basically right uh, this is called federal information security management act and nist was uh, involved nist was given the this responsibility of formulating documents standards best practices and everything to to be used in u.s uh, u.s government now in 2010 nist uh, published sp 837 which is risk management framework right and this journey continued till obama 2014 he actually uh, renamed fisma as security management act to security modernization act and he actually uh, did um, did some some segmentation basically i will say he uh, if before before modernization act everything was with um, uh, the whole cyber security program was centralized so obama actually decentralized it why he decentralized it i have explained that in detail in my last video for which you will find a link uh, at the end of the video you can refer it there now uh, from exams point of view, you should uh, remember that uh, risk management framework is 837, right? So number 37 is less than number 53, which is here 853. If you see uh, in 2014, you have Cybersecurity Enhancement Act, which is NIST 853 for federal. 
least 800 171 for non federal right so so this 853 is basically the cyber security framework and 837 is risk management uh, framework this distinction we should have in our mind i have seen a couple of practice question around this NIST CSF is voluntarily um, if a company wants to adopt it for it for their best practice they can do it National Cyber Security Protection Act uh, it basically Department of Homeland Security will establish an integration center to interface civil innovation for advisories so NCPA is basically the advisory circulation uh, platform like uh, whatever comes in government as part of the research and development and threat intelligence gathering they they publish this to the to the civilian organization so that's how the journey is um from 84 to to 2014 and we are in 2022 so if you want to know further on this um uh, this development uh, what i will do um, i will quickly show you where you can find the video even i will i'm gonna put the link here uh let me go to the desktop no, drawing desk so if you go to my youtube channel uh, you have uh, you have this cissp made easy um, playlist in cissp made easy you have this episode number two so episode number one it was for uh, for ethics uh, how you can memorize uh, ic square code of ethics in five minutes i have made another video for three minutes as well uh, more quicker method uh now you can refer this episode two here uh, which is uh, let me show you so basically this video will uh, will actually um discuss the the whole history in very much detail i think you can refer it here and uh, it will be one stop solution for all your uh, all the history you wanted to know for cissp uh, laws uh, and regulation regulatory development so that's all for this video um uh, next uh, next up we are going to discuss um, discuss the intellectual property licensing import export and the privacy uh, topics uh, i think um, those topics uh, will is uh, will be will be somewhat extensive i think i will i will break those topics in three different uh, videos one will be discussing intellectual property another will be discussing license import export gdpr stuff uh, what you should know for cissp and the last will be privacy privacy is a topic which is uh, something um, that's also having some historical knowledge we should know uh, that's all for this video i hope you like this video it was um, not in much detail because uh, most of the detail part in that specific video which i referred uh, i will put a link here you can watch that video here thanks again thanks for watching the video if you like this video put a thumbs up and you can subscribe to my channel for similar content